I want to talk about walking as kings, walking as a king on this earth. Revelation uh, 5.10 said that uh, he has made us, uh, King James uh, says kings and priests, to reign on this earth. Uh, and, and some translation says to reign as kings on this earth. And one translation said to reign as a priest king on this earth. There's priest kings on this earth. And, and that's what we're to do, to reign as kings. And so we have to walk as kings. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is how do we walk as a king? Well, first of all, I want you to know that a king has power and authority. Amen. A king doesn't consider himself to be uh, a pauper or uh, a victim, but uh, a king uh, looks at abundance and has abundance, great wealth and abundance. And a king has uh, armies and, and uh, uh, forces at his command and, and uh, to conquer. This is not about being overrun and trodden down, uh, poor, uh, miserably me. It's not about that at all. It's about walking uh, as a king on this earth. Amen. And uh, of course, Romans 5, 17, we said we reign in this life. So we're not talking about, oh, in the sweet by and by. We're talking about walking as a king in this life on this earth today. And it's going to take a change in our thinking in yes, order to do amen, that amen. because we haven't been programmed uh, to be a king. Our, our mother and uh, daddy didn't call us a king and uh, our family may not see us as kings and our uh, friends and enemies uh, don't call us kings, but God calls us kings. You know, God walked in the garden in the cool of the evening with Adam and Eve. And so one evening he came there and they said, oh, we're naked. We hid from you because we were naked. And he said in uh, Genesis 3, 11, who, told, who you? told you you're naked? In other words, he's saying, who are you listening to? And, and, and that's what he's saying to each of us today. Who are we listening to? Are we listening to those people who want to push us down? Are we listening to the world that says uh, things are going to pot? Uh, are, who are we listening to? We need to be listening to the word of God and Amen. the spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's, that's what's important. You know, the word of God says that we're one with Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ lives within us. That's the mystery. It's Christ within yes, us, the, the hope, hope of glory. glory. That's Colossians 1, 27. And um, John chapter 15, 7 says, if you abide in me, and so that's Jesus speaking, if you abide in me and I, my word abides in you, you ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Amen. You are one with Jesus Christ. You need to see yourself as one. And who is he? He's king of kings and Lord of lords. You're one with him. As a man thinks, Proverbs 27, 3, as a man thinks, so, so is, is he. It. So we're starting first tonight about perspective. What is your perspective? What are you thinking about? And where did you get your perspective? What well, was it from mama and daddy? Was it from uh, uh, your friends when you're growing up? Where did you get your perspective? It's not from the word of God or the spirit of God because they are telling you you are a king. Hallelujah. You, you are one with the king of kings. Hallelujah. And you are being conformed into his image. As a man thinks, so is he. As a man thinks, so is he. We're being conformed. What is your image of Jesus Christ? What is your image? Do you see him as a mere babe in the manger? Do you see him hanging dead on the cross? Where, mm -hmm. uh, where do you get your image of Jesus Christ? Because you're being conformed into that image. Oh, that's good. That's I, good. I, I tell you, I, the image that I like is Revelation 19:11. And it says, behold, heaven is open. Heaven is open, mm -hmm. and I see a white horse. And he that sits upon... Come on, Becky, we love it, don't we? He that sits <laughs> upon the white horse is called faithful and true. 
Amen. And in righteousness, he judges, judges and, and makes war. war. So let me tell you, there's a lot of people that, wanting, that are wanting to go out and war about their family, about their community, about uh, different things, about this nation. But have they judged first? You see, you've got, you've got to follow Jesus' example. He judges and makes, makes war. war. So he doesn't make war without having the judgment. We have to go to the courts of heaven to find the judgment and to receive the judgment. And then we have an honor and a privilege to execute justice and judgment on the head of the enemy. That's what uh, Psalm 149 says. Yeah. Psalm 149 says, we execute judgment. That's a privilege mm -hmm. that belongs. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to be a king in order to execute uh, uh, judgment on the head of the enemy, on the head of your enemy mm -hmm. and his rulers. Oh, glory to God. I'm talking about Hallelujah. being a king, but having the power and authority. And it's all about perspective. Now, don't think that tonight is not practical. This message is practical. It's about your thinking. Where are you living? It's about in your thoughts. You, mm -hmm. you live in your thought and realm. And you move by your thoughts. And you move by your thoughts. And so let's get our thoughts lined up. Just like God asked Adam and Eve, who are you You're listening to? to? And, and I'm asking you tonight on behalf of, of God, who are you listening to? Mm -hmm. Where are you getting your thoughts? Where, where are you building an image of Jesus Christ? Is it what the world says about Jesus? Or is it Revelation 19, 11, that he is faithful and true and that he makes war, but he judges before he makes war. He does it all in righteousness. Where is your image of Jesus Christ? And are you being conformed to that image? Are you being conformed uh, to an image of, of a savior that is overwrought? over uh, run, run uh, by his enemies. No, I tell you, our mm -hmm. God reigns. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. He's the King of kings and Lord, Lord of, of lords. lords. He is called faithful and true. And he judges and makes it's war more. in righteousness. Let's get the image right. And who are we listening to? We need to be listening to the word of God and, and to the spirit, spirit of God, God and then be moved by what they're telling us. Form that image of Jesus Christ. You see him as a king. And, and you know, he prayed in uh, uh, John chapter 17, that high priestly prayer. Uh, he prayed that you'd be one. Mm -hmm. one with him mm -hmm. one with the father one with the son one with the holy spirit hallelujah and we're one with him we've got to see uh, a king a, a king birthed uh, inside of you coming forth a king N not to somebody that is a, a pauper uh, not somebody that is a victim but a victor and, and and someone who goes to make war but also to have a conquest Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. It's I all about Elizabeth. perspective. All right, Sherry has some. Well, uh, Amy Elizabeth, uh, a few uh, months ago, uh, told me what, what the Lord had shared with her about 2021. And that was, and it goes along with this, uh, reflect the sun in 2021. Reflect the sun in 2021. And, and I certainly agree with that 100%. And I believe that that's who we're supposed to be reflecting. Okay. It's about your perspective. Uh, and where do you find out your perspective? That, this is the, really an important point. Where do you found, find out your perspective on who you are, who you really are? Well, you find it in the presence of God. Uh, Psalm mm -hmm. 60 verse 6 says that his voice is heard in his holy place. In, in that holy place, you hear his voice plainly you hear it clearly and, and that's where he divides the inheritance see this series is about oh, uh, inheriting, inheritance. inheriting a kingdom and you know you've got to know your inheritance where do you find out your inheritance but in the presence Lens of the, of the Lord. almighty Amen. god Amen. That's in, in his presence and in his holy place that's where his voice is clearly heard now i, I want us to look at jesus for a moment jesus was born of the spirit and he was born king. There were some wise men came looking for him and they recognized he was born king. So he, he was mm -hmm. all the time he was on the earth, he was king. But 
he, he studied the word and he, and he uh, fellowshiped with the word in, in those first 30 years. And we don't see much about what was going on there. But what we do see is when he was baptized in the River Jordan, when he came out of that, he was immersed in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit drove him into the wilderness. Because I tell you, there was a life change fasting that was going to happen in his, Amen. In his life Amen. for 40 days. It was a life. It wasn't because he was sick and he was looking for a solution. It wasn't because he was defeated and he was looking for victory. It wasn't because he wanted to hear from heaven. No, it was a life change a lifestyle change, change of fasting. So he was fasting for a, a change in lifestyle coming from a man of the law to a man of the spirit. Okay, so this is real important because this is who you are. You are born of the spirit. That yes, means hallelujah. King, you're born to be king mm, and, mm, and mm. you're destined to be king on this earth in this life, not in the sweet by and by, but in this life and on this earth now uh, that you are destined to be king and reign on this earth. Hallelujah. And so how do we do it? That That's real important. How how do we do it? We, we've got to be follow Jesus example. And Jesus was born king. Then he had this lifestyle change uh, of 40 days of fasting, and, and he was led by the Spirit. And then when he uh, left the wilderness, he went to the temple, and he, and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon, upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to re declare, proclaim uh, liberty to the captive, and, he, and then the next verse he said to proclaim. So who's going to make a proclamation? It's going to be a king. So he's standing up as a king and making some proclamations released to the captive. He's re, he's proclaiming the favorable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so this is who you are. You're a king. You're born when you're born of the Spirit. Uh, you're born a king. Uh, and you're one, you're destined to be one with him. And when you're immersed in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, then you can function and operate on this earth as a king. That's, that's your destiny, to be a king in this life, on this earth. And, and I want you to, to realize that, that you can't listen to the world out there yes. and, and go by what they say because it's that's right. God that's, that's right. telling you you are a king Hallelujah. in this life, Hallelujah. on this earth. You're one with Jesus Christ. I mean, now, wh where do you see Jesus Christ? You see him far away and you down here uh, having your situations and your problems. Do you see him far away? Well, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never uh, forsake you. And he's one with you. So I, I believe he's there with you. But Galatians 2.20 uh, says uh, uh, that we are dead. We have been crucified. Nevertheless, we live. It's not us that live. It's Christ that lives, lives in, in us. us. So Christ is in you, and you are in Christ, and Christ lives, and you're crucified. So who does that make you? It makes you a king walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. Every day, you should see yourself as a king. This is about a perspective here. I'm talking about first perspective, because perspective is the key that unlocks kingship. You, you don't understand. Oh, wow, wow. You don't understand that you're a king until you've got the perspective yep. of what God says about you. Oh, hallelujah. Then, hallelujah. Then begin to move by what God says about you in his word and by his spirit. Oh, okay. Excellent. Now I want to go to the next point. This is my second and final point. Is second that and final? Is that kings <laughs> demonstrate the kingdom. <laughs> The kings, kings demonstrate, demonstrate the, the kingdom. kingdom. Okay, so let's look at uh, what, what is your assignment? Well, Jesus said in Matthew 10, uh, 6, 10, pray this way, your kingdom come, your will be done. What will a king do? See, a kingdom, a king is going to bring forth the kingdom. It's going to bring forth heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bring forth heaven on the earth there will be an invasion that's your assignment to Hallelujah. bring forth the kingdom now let's look at david david was first a shepherd and uh, he operated as a shepherd see there's three different uh, types of people i want i want you to think about there are sheep the sheep forage from the 
from the earth, and, and then there's shepherds that uh, watch take, over the sheep. that watch over the sheep, take care of the sheep. And David, as a shepherd, he killed the lion and he killed the bear and he killed those beasties. That's what a shepherd yes, does. Yes, those little beasties. But when he was anointed to be king, listen, he goes to a higher level. He goes out and he kills the giant Goliath because now he's anointed king. He's killing uh, the enemies of the kingdom and bringing forth the kingdom, a great victory in the kingdom. That's who you are. Hallelujah. You've been anointed to be kings on this earth. And, and glory to God. Go ahead and go out there and do it. Demonstrate the kingdom. Bring forth the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will, will be, be done, done on the earth, earth as, as it, it is, is in heaven. heaven. So we've got to be operating like that. Now let's think about Jesus Christ. I know I'm covering some ground here. I've just got two points. One is have the perspective of the kingdom, and the and the second one is to demonstrate the kingdom. Now, Jesus gave his disciples power and authority. authority. That's Luke 9, 1, and uh, uh, Matthew 10, 1, gave them power and authority. So uh, the thing about a king, he knows how to use power and authority to reign on Hallelujah. this Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, after he gave them power and authority, he... Uh, gave them in some instructions what a king does. A king, he says in Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8, preach the gospel of the kingdom. kingdom. Not, don't preach the gospel, gospel of, of love. Don't <laughs> preach the gospel of salvation. There's just one gospel. It's the <laughs> gospel, gospel of, of the kingdom. kingdom. And then in verse 8, he says, demonstrate <laughs> the kingdom by doing these four things. Heal the sick. Raise, raise the, the dead, dead, cleanse the lepers, lepers and cast out, out demons. demons. Now, Woo! We love you, to cast out those demons. If you are a king, <laughs> you will be demonstrating the kingdom. Hallelujah. Jesus said in uh, Mark 16, beginning verse 15, uh, that uh, go into uh, all the world and preach the gospel. And then he said, these signs will follow believers. They're going to lay hands on the sick and see them recall recover and they're going to cast uh, out demons and, and so the very things he was saying these are the signs see every one of you has been given an assignment to bring forth signs and wonders on this earth that's the reason you're here that's the reason god has sent us and placed us together is that we're learning yeah. how to bring forth signs and, and wonders, wonders on the earth they follow you hallelujah if you're a believer don't tell me that you don't have signs and wonders because he said if you believe you'll have signs and, and wonders. wonders and this is the assignment demonstrate the, the kingdom. kingdom heal the sick raise, raise the, the dead, dead cleanse, cleanse the, the lepers, lepers and cast out, out devils. devils it's the same thing that jesus said in mark 16 that's that's your assignment bring heaven on the earth demonstrate the kingdom and now a lot of people are just doing things in the natural they're they're saying oh we've got a lot of things we want to teach you and make you a disciple but it's not just about making you disciples it's about making kings and with signs following because signs follow believers and if you're not a believer if you're making people who are not believers then there are no signs and wonders there but with believers there's going to be signs and wonders and what Amen. a believer needs to believe is that they are kings in this earth in this life on this earth not way away not sometime in some other realm in some other oh perfect uh, uh, scenario Amen. this is about today we need to be making disciples who are Follow, who are believers with signs and wonders but following them that's what it's all about it's not just about giving people head knowledge intellectual knowledge sure there's some intellectual power associated with intellectual knowledge but this is about supernatural power the kingdom see is a supernatural realm it's the realm of the holy spirit it's where signs and wonders happen. Yeah, it, miracles it's, where, happen. it's where miracles happen. It's, it's where uh, the impossible becomes possible Hallelujah. because you are believing. Because who is a believer? Well, it's somebody 
who has encountered the faithful one. They have faith. You have faith only as you encounter the faithful one. See, Jesus there in uh, Revelation 19, 11 is, said, is called the faithful and the true. He's called faithful and true. So you've got to encounter him in order to have faith. Your, your faith doesn't come uh, from book knowledge. It, it doesn't come from uh, what mama and papa told us. Mm -hmm. it, it, does, it comes by encountering the faithful one. one. The more you encounter the faithful one, the more faith you're going to have. This is exciting today. This <laughs> message has two parts. I hope you'll remember them. The first is about perspective, yeah. that you are a king. So this is about your thought life. And where your thought life leads, you see, that's where your behavior is going to show up. That's where your mm -hmm. actions are going to be. And, and, and if your actions, see, follow a perspective of a king, then they're going to heal the sick, raise the, the dead, dead, cleanse, cleanse the, the lepers, lepers and, and cast, cast out demons. <laughs> That's what a king does. That's what God's king does. And, and your perspective, <laughs> your thought life is going to unlock the kingship. Mm, and, and, mm. But, if you, but you've got to be listening to the word of God, to the living word of God, the living mm. Christ. I, I'm not talking about a dead letter because the oh, dead letter kills. kills. The dead letter kills. Ooh, but the living Christ, life. see, gives life. Yes. And the spirit of living God. Living Christ, Dina. Living the Holy Spirit <laughs> gives you life gives you life and Amen. we've got to have life and so if you're going to make disciples give them life don't give them death don't give them uh, something that's going to kill them and burden them down that's what the religious people did in the time of jesus that's right they put burdens on people and never took any of the burdens off and never helped helped them never never lifted any of those burdens that's what a religious person does it, it puts you in bondage and but, condemnation isn't that right that's right and, and and you can't you can't carry those burdens, but Jesus said, "Come yeah, to me, yeah, all I'll you be there. heavy laden, heavy laden, and I'll give you rest." Amen. All you weary and heavy laden, yes, I'll give you rest. yes, Hallelujah. I'm going to give you rest because my, my yoke, yoke is, is easy and my burden is light. light. Hallelujah. So don't Hallelujah. be religious because religious people they. Uh, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of the Holy Spirit. And so what I'm saying today is if you have the perspective that you're a king, you're one with Jesus, you're walking as a king, and that's who you're listening to. You're listening to God's word, living word, and you're listening to the spirit, mm. being led by the spirit, then you're going to demonstrate the kingdom. The kingdom is very simple. It's just healing the sick, Raising the dead, casting out demons, and cleansing, cleansing the, the lepers. lepers. That's the message. I hope you get it.